attend career fairs just like this, attend industry events, connect with professionals in your field and learn about job opportunities that are available. I mean, look at a program of this nature. Somebody was telling me, if it's down south, people will be willing to pay 100 cities, 200 cities to attend programs like this. I mean, I'm a nerd now. I like to speak the truth. The truth is that that is why those over there are doing well than us here. Yes, they are doing so well than us here. Count the number of NGOs in the north here and count the number of NGOs in the south. Yet, they keep progressing and doing well. And we are still where we are, even upon all the NGOs that are with us. It is the mentality. How do you meet successful people if you are in your hostel? How do you meet successful people if you are, if, if, if you don't want to attend programs like this? It is programs like this you can meet and your life can change forever. Mr. Mubarak here from Data Bank. You can meet him at an event like this and introduce yourself to him. And it's possible after you, you graduate from here, he can connect you up for a job. You can meet me and I might be your, your reference point for you to secure a job in a very responsible place. But if you don't attend programs like this, how do you get there? And mostly, we feel it's normal until we are out of this place and we realize that we should have taken life a bit serious. Leverage on social media. In terms of networking, leverage on social media. If I mention LinkedIn, how many of you are on LinkedIn? Please let me see your hand. LinkedIn. Good. You are now up to 20. How many of you are on TikTok? Be sincere with me. I will give you a price. TikTok. How many of us are on TikTok? I'm sure it's all of us. You are just not wanting to raise your hand. But some of you will appreciate it after you leave here. You are a student in university and you don't even know what LinkedIn is. How many of you are on Facebook? Almost all of us. How many of, you, of us are on Instagram? Almost all of us. But an important site like LinkedIn, we are not on it. Now, LinkedIn is the only social media platform you can easily get a job. So after here, go and set up a LinkedIn account and start building connections. Start liaising with people. Start extending your network. Don't just limit it to your classmates. No. Extend or expand your network. It will help you a lot. Social media is not just a place for you to come and display your beautiful pictures, display your handsome pictures. No. No. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. And I'm sure he is even the recruiter or something. And he sent his email, he said he has looked through his LinkedIn profile and he sees that he's well fit for the job. And he's speaking, uh, uh, he wants him to get that job opportunity. There are a lot of, I mean, there, are, there is no time, but there are a lot of opportunities on LinkedIn.
than on Facebook or TikTok. Ladies and gentlemen, TikTok is just for us to watch Botox. <laughs> I'm a very plain human being. And these days, that is what I'm very sorry, my sisters. But that is what our sisters have mastered in. And some of the guys have equally mastered in those things. <laughs> you just see somebody come on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm saying LinkedIn, TikTok. And you stand at the back. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> you stand and he's holding the phone. I mean, he's give, give me your phone. He's holding her. Uh, She's holding the phone. We come. Then you post. I ask myself, what value will it add to you? Some of you have not even monetized your pages or your accounts. And when I see a guy doing that, I just look at you and say, you, there is no future with you. A guy, then you will also come and say, hey. Then they will be singing, climbing song. Then, then, I don't know what song they will go then, then a guy, you two will be dancing. You two. Oh my goodness. Those things are no more fun. Please, you can get a very professional person on social media. A very professional person. The last time I was telling I think, at a program, I said one time, I just sat down, I said, one guy was selling tractors. So I asked him the price and he told me. I took pictures of the tractors, I also kept it on Facebook, I just shared it on Facebook. And it was like joke. The following day, somebody reached out to me. And they were negotiating. When they asked me how much will it cost for that tractor, they told me the price is 90000 Then I also said, oh, it's 120000 I said, oh. I mean, it's a business thing. Then, then again, they said, okay. Then finally, they agreed on one ten, one hundred and ten thousand Brand new tractors. Then, I mean it was second hand, but very, very new. Then, they asked me, so can we wait to pay tomorrow? That I hope the price is cool. I said, my brother, don't ask about this. I said, where are you located? Then he showed me. In the next five minutes, I was there. I said, you can make payment right now. I said, you don't need to even come to me or something. <laughs> then they were looking at me, hey, that I'm aggressive. I said, yes, my brother, you have gotten even more than that, and you are now waiting for them to come to you. And they paid the money. I took the 90000 went and gave to this person. And the rest of the change, I bought the back with it. <laughs> Some of you have never earned one CD using your social media. And I'm happy when I see some ladies advertising materials on their statues and selling things. Sometimes I just buy them, not that I want that item, but I just buy them just to let the person know that I support what you are doing. I support what you are doing. Three days ago, I wore something up and down was from one lady. And she took a picture of it and kept it on her status. I mean, she's happy that somebody is supporting the business. What are you also doing? Your botox cannot be advertised. I'm telling you the truth. And if you are a young guy and you don't also reposition your mind this way, you won't take over opportunities that are meant for you. No. Do you are you even aware Facebook they sell share, shares? And how many of you have shares on Facebook? 
think about it, you can go and research about it. So number four, uh, number three, personal branding. That is just in connection with what I have mentioned. Personal branding. Let's say it together, personal branding. Personal branding. Yes, very, very important. They always say that how you dress will determine how you are addressed. If you dress like a mechanic, you are going to be addressed like a mechanic. If you dress like a carpenter, you are going to be addressed how? You are going to be addressed anyhow. Ladies and gentlemen, when you are dressing and coming for lectures, be intentionally intentional about what you wear. I met a classmate, my sister, and in his lifetime, he has never worn a belt. I thought he was joking, and he was looking for it. When he had it, he turned the belt inside in the woods. Some of my stories, you know, but so there are some interviews where you dress anyhow, they won't pick you. No, they won't pick you. You need to dress and be intentional about your You are branding yourself for them to see who you are. And I tell people, personal branding is about what people say about you in your absence. In my absence, I'm not sure people will say I'm a, I'm a thief. In my absence, I'm not sure people will say I'm dead. No. Probably what they will say is that I'm very, very provoking when I talk. They can even say I insult people when I talk. They can even say when I'm talking, I'm shouting. But that is passion. That is passion. That is passion. Probably after here when I pick your contact and I'm talking to you, you'll be struggling to hear me. But when I hold the microphone and I'm talking, it's a different thing altogether. So who do people say you are in your absence? Brand yourself very well. Your appearance must define who you are. Don't wear celebrity and come for lectures. And expect them to vote for you as SRC president. Don't wear a boxer and come and come for, for and be passing here to go and fight matter. When people are at lectures here, the next moment you want to hold president. No, it doesn't happen that way. Hello. It doesn't happen that way. Don't even your professional, uh, what do you call it? Your, your, your media, your social media handles. Don't them professional. Be intentional about it. Like my brother here. If you check his Facebook account, probably he's in suit and tie. He's in suit and tie. As soon as I see a certain picture about him to be drawn to me, that this guy is really. But assuming you are in a t-shirt or singlet, and that is what you have used as your TV, and we are doing searches to see if you qualify for the job, no employer will employ you to go and sit in the bank and be wearing a singlet. No. So be intentional about your personal branding on social media. Am I communicating? Yes. Am I communicating? Yes. yes. Be intentional. Guys, when you are coming for lectures, don't wear socks that is torn. Even the lady you are trying to chase might not be interested in you when she sees that. Don't talk about somebody and grow with you. Number four, I'm wrapping up. My time is up. Number four is savings. Say it with me, say this. Say I'm not going to talk about this because I know Mr. Fabi is going to talk about it. But one thing is that, you see, if you don't learn the culture of savings while you are in school, when you finish, it's going to be very difficult. Very, very difficult for you to save. So, any money that comes, I mean, they have a formula they do it. Have a certain percentage you are saving, even if it's one city. It is not an amount at this your level, but it is just the culture you are trying to inculcate so that when you live here, that culture can still 
did in you. Moving out of your comfort zone. That is number five. Learn to move out of your comfort zone. If you want to build a successful career, learn to, go, uh, to move out of your comfort zone. It's very, very important. Take calculated risk. You have lived in Lima all your life in a crowd. And you are not, your life is not being transformed. It's possible when you live and go and settle somewhere else. Your life will change. It's possible you will live in Tamale all your life. And things are not working for you. It's very possible. When you live and you go to Accra, things can change for you. There are a lot of testimonies that I can share with you how people took calculated risks to move out of their comfort zones and things certainly changed for them. And the last thing I'm going to talk about is keep dreaming big. Say with me, keep dreaming big. Keep dreaming big. Ladies and gentlemen, all what I've talked about, if you don't know how to see yourself as a big person in the future, nobody will even see you big. Nobody will buy into your idea. Nobody will buy into your dream. Nobody will buy into what you are pursuing as a career. Some of you here who are talented and want to become musicians, pursue it. You want to become politicians, pursue it. You want to become farmers, pursue it. You want to be president one day, pursue it. You want to become an MP one day, pursue it. You want to become, I mean, a chartered accountant, a lawyer, a doctor, whatever you want to become. Ladies and gentlemen, pursue it. Keep dreaming big. People may look down on you. They may say you don't even look like it. They may say this dream is not achievable. They may laugh at you today, but keep dreaming big. I read about the Wright brothers, their father. He was called Milton Wilberforce. And this man was in a church gathering when the pastor said that one day he has a dream that one day human beings are going to be flying in the air. The right brothers, those that came invented the aeroplane. The father stood up in that meeting and said, Hey, you are blaspheming against God. This thing is not possible. How can human beings be competing with angels? And said it's not possible. Ladies and gentlemen, years later, these guys came up with the first aeroplane and flew it. Then they asked him, how do you feel now? And he said, these guys have beat my imagination. They have made me lose my focus. Because what I thought wasn't possible has now been, become possible. Ladies and gentlemen, you may have a dream that I want to do this. And people will say it is not possible. They may even look down on you. They may say all sorts of nasty things about you. And you will feel like, let me quit. But quitting is not an option. I tell people, when you feel like quitting, leave that environment and go to a different environment and keep pursuing. This was how big your dream was going to become. I finished with the story about Mark Zuckerberg when he started in 2003. And he came together with his friend and said, I am going to establish something that we can communicate with as friends. And so that he could expand it to their entire campus and became the youngest billionaire on earth. As we speak today, his network is more than what Ghana, our network is. Young guys, currently Mark is 39 years. I think in about some few years, I should also be getting that age. But what the guy has got, I can't compare myself to. Some of you are hitting 39 as we speak. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That is something I want you to go and think about. Today, if Mark 
Zuckerberg dies, we will remember him of faith. We will remember somebody like Ali Kodamboti. We will remember someone like Bill Gates. We will remember someone like Asamo Jan. We will remember someone like Messi. We will remember someone like Cristiano Ronaldo. We will remember someone like Akufuado. Like John Mahama. Hello. Hello. I mean, my point is that, my point is that, I mean, the president of Akufuado, he is somebody who is a dreamer. Do you know the number of times he contested to become flag bearer? He contested and defied. If it were some of us, we would have stopped. But he never stopped and became president. What will people remember of him? Will they remember someone who sat in a classroom and was shouting when Ronaldo's name was mentioned? Or what will they remember him of? Go and think about it. Think about what you can do for the world and let's impact our generation. My name is Campilari Roberts and I'm grateful for the opportunity once again. Thank you very much for the presentation. In fact, he has taken us from classroom to uh, the world of finance. And we are very grateful. It was actually insightful and impactful. I wanted to find out uh, whether the um, financial institutions that are available that can recommend to us. I think some of us want to start saying uh, that. You may have the skills too, but maybe the support and all that will not be there. So I wanted to find out from them. They have been in the system that can help us out. Thank you. Yeah, so it is finance. Thank you. Manager will talk more on that. But there are a lot of opportunities for you to advance your career. And there are a lot of organizations for you to advance your career. So, I mean, if I, I left out something in my presentation, I wanted to talk about volunteerism and then intentions. While you are in school, you can be interning with an organization like Inca Bank, you can intern like an organization where I work, you cannot be doing that work. I mean, if you are doing uh, social and behavior change, this is one of the places you can intern with. I mean, a lot of organizations so that you can add up your CV and boost your chances of getting employed when you apply for a job. This conference you have attended, I'm not sure there will be certificates, but if there are certificates, I will encourage you to take it and capture it as part of your achievements when applying for any job. It boosts your likability in being picked for. The quality of association you have got will determine even how much you will have in the future. Because in today's world, it's about who knows you. It's not even, it's no longer about who you know or is it whom you know. It's not about who you know, it's about who knows you. So you have to be intentional about getting people 
to know you. So you've come for a program like this and you want to establish contact with my big brother here. He's an HR person. He has got, it was through him I got my current job opportunity. And, 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 and it's through the network we are just talking about. So you want to network with somebody like him. So when, you, when we come like this and we close, you can just walk to him and say, Sir, I am so so and so, and I want to have your contact or your card so that I can further engage you to have some discussions with you. Be open mind, don't be scared, don't have any fears in you about people talking about it or not. Once you take the contact, next time, text him. And when you text him, don't come and say, hello sir, when he's not online, you wait. When he comes online and replies, hello, then you come back and say, how are you sir? Then you wait, then he will reply, I'm fine. Then you come back and say, sir, my name is Roberta from UDF. Then you wait and he will come and say, okay, then you will now come and say, Sir, can I ask you a question? Then you are waiting for him to reply. Then you will now come, Sir, what is your name? Where do you work? You mean, it doesn't happen that way. Be intentional about it. When you chat the person, write, Hello, Sir. Okay, like this, my brother, he just sent me a message yesterday. Or was it the day before yesterday? I want to, let me just read it to you. like this because some of us don't know so when you meet the person like that send him a mail good morning sir i hope you are in great health today my name is Fuseni Dangoma I got your contact from Joseph Wuntuma I am a big fan of yours I've attended your personal development seminars I was at Tamale Youth Summit at Nat Hall and after school what is next conference I am a student nutritionist a speaker and an author of Speak to Survive. It's an ebook. I'm reaching out to seek your expertise on my recent work, Speak to Survive. So, with your consent, I would love to send a, a copy of my ebook to you for you to comprehensively review it. Thank you for your patience up to this point. I will await for your consent before I send the ebook. I wish you Godspeed in all your businesses. A message like this, even if you are not compelled to do something about it, you will want to respond. Then I came and said, Good morning, my brother. Thank you for getting in touch. We will work together. Let me know how I can be of help. Then he said, I appreciate your message. Then he now sent me the ebook. It's currently on my laptop. I'm going through it. Then I'll give my input. I mean, we have established that network like that. And it continued. So one day when I'm looking for somebody to do something and he's qualified. Do you think I will deny him? But if I should send, if you should send me a message and say, hello sir, can I get 100 CDs from you? <laughs> do you think I will be inspired to send the money to him? Because we don't have a certain connection. So I tell people, try to build first a certain connection. Data bank manager is here. What does he want? He wants people to come and register with their bank. Call him and say, Sir, I would want to arrange my class for you to come and talk to them about your data, uh, your, your bank products. Sharp, he will be interested in you. And you come and talk to them. After you finish, you are now the lesion for he and your students. Are we getting something? So some of us are even sitting on money. I'm even sure there are some people when you are able to, you are able to bring them as business, you have a certain commission and all that, but we don't even know. So networking, there are a lot of ways you can build network. I finished with this, I know our time is up. I finished with this. I organized a program, Tamale Youth Summit, and with my team, I mean my team members, they are here. And after the program, a certain gentleman contacted me. He wanted to contact the MP for Tamale North. He came for the program, Honorable Suhidi, Alasan Suhidi. And I told him that these politicians, if you don't have their agenda, they will not pay attention to you. So try to do something that you will value. 
I mean, fast forward, I advised him, I said, if you can print some t-shirts for him and tell him this is your business and uh, this is what you want to do to contribute to his campaign, you'll be happy. I mean, Honorable Suhini never saved his contact. But after he said that, the man saved his contact. And he started seeing his WhatsApp status. That is how it is to build relationships. Then, after he sent the t-shirts, then one day he told the man, this is the business he's doing. So in case he needs any supply, surprisingly, he called him and gave him a contract worth over 100,000 Ghana cities for him to supply. That is how we build network. So there are a lot of ways when you go for programs and build network. Now, if you are also targeting to work at a certain bank, you can just walk into the bank, go to the manager, and start a certain conversation with him or her. You want to learn about this and that and that and that. One of the things is you have to be bold about who you want to network with. Don't be scared about it. Some of your lecturers, they are supposed to be your friends before you finish school, but you are scared of them. Build that relationship. A friend of mine, he had to pass through me to call one of our lecturers to write a recommendation for him. He doesn't even know any of them. So it means after school, you will need somebody to write recommendations for you. Do you have their contacts at all? No. You, can, you have to be intentional about it while you are in school. I hope I have tried to answer your question. Thank you very much.